Hi, I'm going to be doing a presentation on the clinical presentation and diagnostic evaluation of nephritic syndrome versus nephrotic syndrome, which has been compiled by Kelly Borden. First of all, let's address what nephritic and nephrotic syndromes are. Nephritic syndrome is a collection of signs associated with swelling in the glomeruli, which then causes a decrease in, decrease in glomerular filtration rate, or GFR. A decreased GFR causes azotemia, oliguria, hypertension, hematuria, and red blood cell casts, which are the signs of nephritic disease. The decreased rate of filtration increases byproducts that are normally filtered and excreted, causing the increase in blood urea nitrogen and creatinine, and resulting in a lower volume of urine. The increased amount of fluid and byproduct remaining in the body causes an increase in blood pressure. Additionally, baroreceptors in the kidney sense the decreased GFR and cause the body to increase blood pressure to try to increase GFR. Red blood cell casts and blood are excreted into the urine because the swelling of the glomeruli causes small pores in the podocytes to enlarge and allow these bigger molecules through and into the filtrate, which is then excreted as urine. Nephrotic syndrome is a collection of signs associated with an altered electrical charge on the capillary membrane in the nephron. The normally negatively charged capillary wall is altered so that it no longer repels negatively charged compounds, most importantly albumin. Albumin, which is normally recycled and not excreted, is then forced from the body. The abnormal urinary excretion of albumin results in proteinuria and hypoalbuminemia. Normally, albumin in the blood attracts water and keeps water in the circulating intravascular space. The abnormal loss of albumin that occurs with nephritic disease causes water that is normally retained in the blood to leak into the extracellular tissue. This results in second and third spacing and massive edema throughout the body. Another effect of the loss of albumin is hyperlipidemia. This results because the low levels of protein in the blood stimulate the liver to synthesize more protein. Additionally, lipid breakdown decreases due to lower levels of lipoprotein lipase, which is an important enzyme in this process. Glomerular diseases fall on a spectrum with nephrotic syndrome at one end and nephritic at the other. Patients may also have a mixture of nephrotic and nephritic symptoms, such that at the least severe end of the nephrotic spectrum, hematuria is often found. The classic nephrotic syndrome diseases are minimal change and, membran and membranous glomerulonephritis. The classic nephritic syndrome disease is post-infectious glomerulonephritis. The extent of the spectrum can be seen in the graphic on this slide. Patients with nephritic syndrome may complain of bloody or dark urine, which can be seen in the photo. Patients may have swelling in areas of low tissue pressure, such as the periorbital and scrotal areas. Multiple diagnostic tests would be useful to perform. Blood pressure readings would be high compared to the patient's normal. Serologic tests, including complement levels, antinuclear antibodies, cryoglobulins, hepatitis serologies, and many others, may be ordered and used to narrow the differential diagnosis. Urinary analysis would show dysmorphic red blood cells, which are misshapen from being pushed through swollen pores. Red blood cell casts may also be seen in the urine. There may be proteins present in the urine as well, but at a much lower level than with nephrotic syndrome, which is why there may be some swelling, but significantly less than is seen with the nephrotic syndrome. Renal biopsy results would vary based on etiology and disease. The clinical presentation of nephrotic includes peripheral edema, which is the hallmark sign. This edema is caused by low plasma oncotic pressure, caused by low blood albumin levels, in addition to sodium retention. Edema will first be seen in dependent areas of the body, such as the ankles, because of the effects of gravity. As a condition worsens, edema may be seen in other areas of, the, areas of the body and can even cause pulmonary edema and pleural effusion, resulting in dyspnea. Patients may also have an increased incidence of infection because of an increased loss of immunoglobulins. Patients may also have venous thrombosis because of the abnormal loss of anticoagulant factors. Diagnostic tests that would be shown that would show abnormalities with nephrotic disease include urinalysis, blood chemistries, and renal biopsy. UA would show proteinuria, and if the patient had hyperlipidemia, then oval fat bodies may be present in the urine. The oval fat bodies are a result of lipid deposits being sloughed in the renal tubular epithelial cells. Blood chemistries would show hypoalbuminemia and hypoproteinemia. A number of other findings may be present, including hyperlipidemia, hypertriglyceride, hypertriglyceridemia, elevated erythrocyte sedimentation rate, and deficiencies in vitamin D, zinc, and copper. Renal biopsy results vary based on etiology and disease. The medical provider must use the patient's clinical presentation along with their objective findings and diagnostic evaluation to determine where on the nephritic nephrotic scale a patient falls. This will help to determine the disease state, which is important because treatment depends on the underlying etiology and the degree of glomerular damage and dysfunction. Thank you.